He's a guy who's been stifled. He's been imprisoned. He's been not allowed to be himself. He's been not allowed to show the world his power. He's an extremely prideful person. He's that kind of prideful, that kind of delusional. He woke up in the morning with a mindset that the world should be a certain way, and if it wasn't, he could crush it, or discipline it, or make it be the way he wanted it to be. I play authority figures because I'm tall, I'm white, I have sort of classically white, not classically in the Greek sense of classically beautiful, but I have classically white features. Nobody's going to doubt for a minute that I'm not white, and because of my voice it signifies authority. It tends to, to be perceived as an authoritarian voice. Hey, you! Get away from my car! Whenever I'm ready. That's the problem with the movies is that you're invited to, you're asked to, if you want to make a living at it, you're asked to niche out, to find your niche. I didn't like it, I didn't want to do it, but they would ask me to do it and I would go back and do it. And it got, I, it became a stereotype. The money was nice, the women were nice, and the money was nice. Uh, yeah, and the and the and the uh, appreciation was nice. The fact that they like you, they they massage your shoulders in a in a metaphorical way. They blow in your ear. They seduce you, and I was seduced. I'm kind of neutral looking. Neither like really handsome, nor am I really horrible to look at. For the longest time, people would actually say, you don't have any character in your face. Yeah. But we can also adjust it. Who is that? That's still you. Oh. Yeah. Me squatting in the street still? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I think we should, we should move on to the, to the next shot. OK. The guys who were really coming up and making a splash were guys like Pacino, De Niro, Dustin Hoffman, who's Jewish, I think, and little and not a typical wasp. Redford was always there. It took me a long time to like Robert Redford and like what he did. You can't not like him because he's so bloody charming and sweet and cute and everybody. There's Christopher Walken on the other side. Christopher Walken, his father was a baker. I mean, all the parts he plays are, twi are the twisted version of that pristine, of the Bob Redford pristine, perfect white.
I pushed my family away from me for a long time for just reasons that I just wanted to not be identified as a white boy from the suburbs, uh, but also because of things they were unable to do and for me. My father did the best he could, and I maligned him for years because I needed to malign my father. I was talking to a friend of mine right before he died uh, about those years in New York. He realized that not being Italian, not being from the streets of New York, he needed to dirty himself up, which were his words. So he started drinking heavily and dirtied himself up. I drank pretty heavily too, but I wasn't a very good drinker. So I, uh, I got dirty, but I didn't get dirty enough to... Uh, to uh, get more work. There's, there's self-loathing in it because you, uh, what you are, I mean, I, I am what I am. I mean, I, that's where I come from. <laughs> After Annalous, I'd... Maybe a year, it had been out a year, I was sitting in my agent's office in New York, and he gets a call, and he takes the call. Excuse me, I gotta take this. Hello. God. Then he s puts it on speaker. Uh, would you ask me that question one more time? John, I need a Mark Metcalf type. Well, I just happen to have Mark Metcalf sitting right here in my office, and he's looking for a job. No, 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 no. I don't need him. I need a Mark Metcalf type. I was, it was a year out of Animal House. I was already either too old or too, he didn't think he could afford me. I would do anything. But somebody else got the job. At least I'd become a type. Like that? Is that enough? Okay, and that's where you're gonna hold it. I'm gonna hold it right here, okay. Yeah. You're worthless and weak! What do you wanna do with your life? You're worthless and weak! What do you wanna do with your life? But I am good at good an being angry. I am good at being an authority figure. People stop me and say, oh, scream that at me, do that at me. No, 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 you've got to spit on me when you do it. They're not happy unless I get spit on them. So, and I've been asked to do that over and over again. You're worthless and weak. What do you want to do with your life? More? This way of behaving, this way of acting towards the world, this way of conceiving of the world, morally it's a crime, I think. It's criminal to try to dictate to another person what they should be or could be in my sense of morality. I see in lots of people that sense of narcissism, that sense of only looking at the world as a mirror that reflects you back to them. So a lot of the characters I play are fools. We're behaving for the benefit of other people. And if you, if you get aggressive about that, you start 
manufacturing yourself for other people. You know, sometimes I think there's enough anger in me, enough violence. I'd like to play one of those parts, a guy with a big gun who just goes around killing people. I left when I, in 2000, retired, resigned, quit. There were many, many moments of deep despair, and probably the amount of alcohol I drank had something to do with that, about, uh, I'm, I'm not in this. This isn't about me. It didn't ask of me what I felt I had to give. And when my son was born, I started saying no to jobs because I, I had more fun raising my son. I learned, I learned that he at Asperger's when he was in, I guess, the seventh or eighth grade. And uh, not a challenge anymore at all, but it was for a while. Part of Asperger's is a lack of empathy or a non-understanding of empathy. You do it, that thing you do as a parent, you try to guide them through this. So I tried to guide him towards empathy. You can learn that stuff, and you might actually be better at it if you learn it and recognize it as a, as a necessary earmark of being a human. You have to be able to empathize with uh, the person who's sitting across the table with you and listen to what that other person is going through and having, having to go through and not just sort of turn your face to the wall and turn your back to them. And you've got to find ways to express what you're going through so that they get what you're going through. It's nurtured those parts of me being a parent, the empathetic parts, and, and the part or parts of me that, that love. This process of being human is a, a process of constant growth. You're never done. You're never finished. You just end when you die. All I want is, I want them to remember, and I've told my son this, I want them to remember when they do the Academy Awards, you know the in memoriam section? I just want to get my picture up there. I'm 72. I've had a child, I've been married, I've been divorced, I've had parents die, I've had brothers die. I think I have a little bit more character, I hope anyway. 